talking about async API, and he is Fran Mendes. So we could welcome Fran Mendes on stage. And his topic is about async API and the future API specs, which I suppose could get more uh, get more uh, beyond the, the this uh, session we have in the morning to give you more sense of what async API could do for you. So hello, Fran. Um, hello, can you hear me? Can you yeah, hear me? I can. Okay. Could you also share your screen? Oh, yes. Let me just check a uh, sec. Uh, okay. Great. 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 Uh, so not sure if the dimensions are really great, but let me try to uh, fix it a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Great. <laughs> okay. I think we are all set now, so I will pass the stage to you, friend. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, cool. Let's get started. Um, Three years ago, I, I, I created um, async API with um, with the purpose of defining event driven APIs um, because I couldn't do it with with Open API uh, at that time. Right? Well, even now, it's, it's still not possible, right, for event driven APIs. And I'm glad I did it. However, I I add a little bit more chaos to the existing mess, and and. And I couldn't even suspect it. I'll, I'll elaborate on that later. Um, I think KPI when I when I was just creating it, uh, I think KPI uh, worked well with my pure event driven APIs. Um, Open API was perfect for my REST APIs, and GraphQL was great for my front end APIs. Uh, JSON schema. I wasn't even aware that I was using it to uh, that I was using this schema. To be honest, like it's um, it it was like kind of hidden inside Open API and Async API. So in a in a blink of an eye, me and my team uh, needed to learn Open API, GraphQL, Async API, and JSON schema. So all the all these four specifications. We didn't want to. We didn't want to learn all the specs. We wanted to solve certain problems, uh, and for this, we had to learn all the specs, right? Which wasn't good. Uh, the The learning curve was uh, a little bit steep. Cool. So let me let me introduce myself uh, before I continue. Um, Good morning from Spain. Um, my name is Fran Mendes, and I'm the founder of the Async KPI Initiative. Uh, and the Async KPI Initiative is an open source initiative uh, to build the meant to build the future of event-driven architectures. I'm based out of Badajoz, or Badajoz is actually the Spanish pronunciation. It's Badajoz, maybe, uh, in Spain, and it's on the it's a beautiful land on the on the border. Uh, on the border with Portugal, right? I really recommend uh, visiting. Um, have a look. Um, uh, have a look at the pictures around. I really recommend. And um, yeah, I'm a proud uh, citizen, as you can see here. So, so yeah. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the current state of the art and the future of API specs. Um, at least, like, what, what's my opinion on the on the current problems that we're facing and the potential solutions, and also how Async KPI is trying to um, it's contributing to the problem because we contributed to the problem as well, and uh, how we're thinking or how we're planning to uh, contribute uh, in different potential ways. So, having different potential solutions, yeah. So this is this is the current landscape of um, of the API specifications. I'm sure you can find more, uh, or I'm sure you can you, you can uh, even dig a little bit more and 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 
and find more detailed lists of uh, of uh, API specifications. But roughly speaking, this is the this is the landscape. I will probably add Postman collections here, but I only wanted to include um, you know the open source initiatives and um, didn't want to include any uh, any any product related uh, specification, right? Except probably GraphQL, but yeah, still uh, now it's open source. So look at it. I mean, we, we have we have SNK API, we have Open API, we have GraphQL, JSON schema, we have gRPC, Avro, RAML, uh, and and this is the problem that we had uh, in the past as well. Like the user sees a fragmented uh, land of standards, right? But the ultimate goal of the of the user is not to use the specs, right? It's not to learn the specs. The the the, the ultimate goal of the, of the user is to solve their problems. Like I want to create an API. I want to create a REST API. I want to create uh, an API that I can consume with my phone. Uh, I can. Uh, I want to connect uh, or I want to send and receive uh, events in real time. So that's my real problem, not uh, not to learn the specs, right? So, so we can fairly say that we became another problem. We as uh, the spec authors, right? So this is like a, a, a self um, reflection, right? As uh, as a nest, as a spec author, like we actually became a, another problem, and we have to fix it. Let me tell you a story before I continue. So I'm I'm. Um, I'm uh, attending, not attending. I'm speaking very often to, on on API days uh, conferences, um, and uh, I can tell you, like API days Paris, API uh, API days Zurich, API days Amsterdam, API days Helsinki, San Francisco. I've always gotten the same questions dozens of times. Always is, are you going to merge in KPI with Open API? Like, are you going to put the whole thing in a single file, so because people were asking for for this single spec to be able to do both things, right? And my answer was always was all the time was the same. Like we've considered this, but we we don't want to. We we will put a lot of pressure on tooling vendors, on tooling creators, right? Because uh, it's really super hard to. Um, uh, to give support on, on a tool or on a service provider, uh, it's really super hard to provide support for Open API alone without talking about this in KPI. So imagine to add to imagine to add support for async KPI uh, as well. So this this will be this will be crazy because uh, just a, just as, a, as for those who don't know async KPI very well. Um, in, in 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 comparison, if you want, with Open API, um, in terms of in terms of how difficult it will be to support one versus the other, uh, is that in this in KPI we don't we don't only support once one one protocol like we don't only support HTTP we support lots of protocols and we don't only support JSON schema but we also support Avro for instance so that as you can imagine that complicates. Uh, a lot of things a lot. So you see, uh, I was I was always I was always saying that no, because we're gonna put a lot of pressure on the on the tooling vendors and service providers, and uh, and you see what I did. So you see the problem. Why uh, when I was giving this response, I was I was thinking about as the spec authors and uh, and and also the tooling vendors and the service providers as well. And the users were like, mm, meh, I understand, but yeah, it's not my problem. I mean, solve your problems, <laughs> right? It's like, as a user, you're translating, uh, you're translating your problem to me. Like, uh, you're giving, uh, I, I have like almost a nearly identical specs for REST APIs and event driven APIs. And you don't give me the, the possibility to use both together. And it's just because you both, Open API and SNK API, are not collaborating, uh, and, or not collaborating enough. So it's like, 
the user was always like, eh, I don't care about your process, right? It's, it, it's your stuff. And um, I have the feeling that um, there seems to be a poor connection between spec authors and tooling authors, but also between tooling authors and, and the users, right? So it's like three lands. That's how I see it. It's like you, you have spec authors, tooling authors here, and, and the users. And they are completely disconnected. Sometimes they speak to each other. But yeah, it's like uh, the, connect, the connection between them is not really fluent, right? Um, so uh, as, as an example, for instance, uh, given that uh, Async API is very young uh, and, and Open API is already more mature, uh, like uh, let's, let, let's just uh, put an example. Like how many of you are using the latest major version of Open API, the version three? Uh, I don't care if it's uh, 3.01 or 3.0 or 3.1, or which is the latest one. Um, I don't see. Uh, I don't see anybody raising their hands. Uh, yeah, I, I need to go live again. This this uh, video sessions are killing me. Uh, so yeah. So jokes aside, um, like if you look back, if you look back, I think it was like two years ago since uh, Open API launched version three, and uh, and and we see and we don't see a lot of people adopting version three yet. Also, because how many how many products have been updated to support uh, Open API three, like uh, to support the latest major version? Not many, right? So, so I mean, it, there's there's starting to be more, but you see you now, like two years after, right? Uh, and that's uh, that's not cool because uh, it's it's like really slow. It's a really slow process. We want to keep improving faster, but it's not really possible, right? And uh, and I'm sure that this is going to happen to Async API as well. I'm 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 I'm, I'm sure. And, and and it's not just a Open API stuff or uh, or or GraphQL stuff or Ruby stuff or whatever, right? So it really takes time to to get people to adopt uh, a new a new spec, right? So users um, users and companies. The way I see it is that users and companies don't have don't have enough incentives to update to newer versions of the spec, because yeah, like the effort and uh, an impact that it will have in their products or in their daily life, right? Like uh, as as developers, the 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 the, um, the gains, the benefits that you will get are very low compared to the huge effort. Um, especially when it's a major version where you don't include like lots of new features, but what you do is actually reorganizing stuff around, accommodating stuff around just uh, for for bigger, uh, accommodating for growth, let's say, right? So, so yeah, so it's like when you look at it, it's like users don't really want uh, don't really want to update because it's it's too much, right? Okay, so my opinion here is that um, so since the since the talk is about uh, the way I, <clears throat> sorry the way I see the the future of APIs uh, specifications, I cannot see the future yet, <laughs> so. So this is my opinion on, on how um, on how we could be solving this problem, like how we could could be, or at least improving it if we don't solve it uh, like hundred percent, right? So we what what we agree here is that we're gonna do something. So so in my opinion, there are there are like six key points uh, that we should be uh, starting to do in the next. Uh, I was going to say in in the, in the next uh, in the next year. But we should probably start right now, like <laughs> right, right after this talk, we should probably start already. But I understand that there are priorities, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. So this, to me, is very important. Um, we, uh, authors of the specs, must start collaborating 
now like now is now and we will have started probably uh, years ago but uh, this is taking too long now and in my, in my opinion i think if users don't see this collaboration happening users of the specs right I think they, they should be demanding for that. Like uh, users should be asking for that and, and, and putting some pressure as like, hey, you guys have to collaborate more because you're not you know, understanding each other. So for instance, we we collaborate somehow from time to time. We, we not collaborate, but we communicate from time to time with OpenAPI, with the OpenAPI folks. So whenever OpenAPI has some changes, or is planning to do some changes, we are already aware of it. And uh, we have uh, we have uh, people like contributing uh, on both sides, like Mike Ralso, which I really appreciate a lot. And and that uh, that helps, like that helps, uh, let's say, um, yeah, collaborating or let's say even, even more communicating. But it's not enough. And this is between async API and open API. Now imagine async API and GraphQL totally disconnected. We're totally like totally disconnected. Um, we're now trying to make people uh, bet a little bit more on JSON schema and support them. So please, please, if you really like API specs and if you're using them, please consider supporting JSON schema, the JSON schema folks, because uh, it's key to open API and to async API. It's a key part. It's the schema part that you see on, on, on both specs and they are not getting almost any support. So yeah, they, they are, they are like a, a big part of the, of both specs and, and uh, we're trying to, to support them as much as possible, but they, they really need more love. So, so yeah, as, a, as I was saying that, for instance, async API and gRPC, async API, um, uh, well, async API and GraphQL and gRPC, for instance, we don't see many collaboration, but I'm sure that between GraphQL and gRPC uh, working groups, they you don't see many collaboration as well. And uh, we're trying, so last year we, we've been putting efforts in, in into having more collaboration with Avro and Raml, uh, the Raml people. Uh, which is done by Yulsop. So, so yeah, so in, in, in this case, you, you can see more collaboration, but still not enough, right? Also, something that I keep seeing on the, on the, on the market of API products is that the product vendors put a lot of effort into you being able to fulfill the data, the necessary data, to create a, 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 an API, an open API document or an async API document or, or whatever uh, spec you're using. And that's like, that's not really the point. Like that's already, that's already like, that's a, that's a huge like uh, uh, jump or gain that you don't have to type the async API or the open API document by hand, which is already a lot uh, and you don't have to learn it. But again, like, the user problem is not, I want to create an open API document or an async API document. Uh, no, I, I want to create a REST API and document, it, and document it. And I want to feed my um, API, um, I always forget about this name, uh, API gateway. Um, so I can validate and, and measure how things are, I can validate the payload and, and measure how this, this is being used and, and everything, right? And and the exchange format is is open API, for instance, right? So that's that's what people really want. Like uh, people want to solve their problems, not uh, to solve our problems, right? Or to put something or to solve something that we put we've put in the middle. Um, so yeah, so product vendors, I think uh, they, they need to do uh, a bigger effort here. And I think Postman is a great example here. So if, if you if you have noticed, they put the focus on the user on the user intent, right? Like you create a request because Postman is like uh, 
Postman is, is, is for that, right? Like initially, it was all, only for that, that to create the request and, and get the response. And it was like an, a, a nice and easy way to, to do it, right? Uh, now it allows you to do more uh, like testing, right? And, and all this stuff. But the simple stuff is, it's there. Like I want to create a request. I mean, don't, don't bother me about what's the info field of the, of the API or what's the, you know, what's the operation uh, object or what is the, a response object or whatever so no 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 just give me <laughs> it asks me the the minimum that i need to to create a request and i will get the response and by providing these user experience it will be possible for them to to generate a spec file in case the user needs it and and i'm not sure if it's still possible but if it's not possible i'm sure it's uh, uh it will be possible soon and that takes me to my to my next point which is the the specs the specs format like async API open API or GraphQL or whatever they need to become the exchange format right so think about uh, I think product vendors need to think about their products as um, just a step on a bigger pipeline I um, I see I I I I can see product vendors not allowing to export um, from their product to async API or to open API, uh, but they allow like importing or the other way around. As this is broken, this is a broken experience for the user, right? It's like if your if your um, product is in the middle of a pipeline, of a bigger pipeline that you don't even know, uh, you should be allowing input and output, right? Importing and exporting. Uh, from this uh, exchange uh, format or exchange documents, right? And it's basically enabling just your users to to do more by allowing them the, by allowing them to do uh, to do it. Also, my next point. Uh, sorry, I didn't change that the slide. <laughs> I think specs must be uh, highly composable and and reusable. So, so we see like people using people using like the the whole Open API document or the whole Async API document, but um, uh, I think that we can start using specs inside specs, and I, and I'll elaborate on that. For instance, if you if you um, if you use open, if you're a, an avid user of OpenAPI and Async API, you will see that you have JSON schema inside inside that. Like I was saying, the schema, uh, the schema objects in, inside uh, the specs are are actually JSON schema, it's not defined by by us. And uh, and and at Async API, we didn't want to stop there. We wanted to, we also wanted to to give support to to Avro, right? And <clears throat> sorry, which is think i mean it was thinking about the user because it's widely used on event driven architectures and uh, and also at some point i'm sure that we'll be adding support for graphql and we'll be supporting uh, grpc because yeah nobody's using just a uh, um just a an event driven uh, architecture an event driven api with uh, only http or only MQTT, or only right like sometimes a simple simple user uh, use use case that comes to my mind uh, from time to time is uh, it's uh, and as stupid as this sorry for the word is you have probably a REST API to create a new user let's say to sign up a new user and you have a POST slash users and something you want to do maybe inside your microservices architecture is after the, the user has been created, I want to trigger an event and say like, hey, a user has, has been created, here are the details. So whoever is interested, uh, you can consume this information. This is probably in, in, in most, of the, in most of, the, of the software as a service products today, like this, this scenario. And this is a simple, uh, like a simple example of how you, nobody uses only REST or only even driven architectures, right? It's like usually you use both uh, together. So why using 
to uh, to spec files to document something that is actually related, right? Which is it's, it's a single flow if you think about it. Cool. Uh, that's a key one to me. <clears throat> Sorry. I think spec authors have to provide um, official parsers because uh, we're seeing, for instance, we're doing this on, on async API, but um, I see many other uh, many other initiatives not doing it. And I'm looking at you, Open API. So, yeah. <laughs> so please join us in, in this movement and provide uh, official parsers or reference implementation, call it whatever you do, uh, you want. But this needs to be um, this this needs to be done, and product vendors must adopt and contribute to these parsers. So let's stop this yeah. mess, right? Let's stop this mess. Now. Everybody doing uh, their own. Uh, I was going to say the word their own stuff, <laughs> and uh, and and not wanting to uh, collaborate yeah. uh, between. Thank them. you, friend. Yeah, and I think it's about time oh, right now. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry. no problem. <laughs> I think we we don't have time for any question right now. But if you have any things about uh, async API that you want to ask friend, feel free to drop him a message and, and follow up yep. off stage. So. Sure. Just uh, just give me a chance just to probably leave this uh, contact here. So if if you have some questions about what I just talked about is uh, async API or something, whatever else. Um, just reach out to us. Yeah, I'm happy to chat. Okay, thank you, thank you, friend.